The Story of Ambrosio Ambrosio was a young adventurer, born and raised in Italy. He had always longed to travel to Greece to have his fortune told by the Oracle of Delphi. When he was an adult, he got on a boat and sailed to the western edge of Greece, near Astokos. He traveled east until he eventually reached the city of Delphi. Delphi was home to a great temple of Apollo, the sun god. It was also the home of Pythia, better known as the oracles. The Pythia would sit in a chamber within the temple and speak of prophecies, inspired by Apollo, to those who came to seek the oracle's wisdom. When Ambrosio finally arrived at the temple, he went to speak to the Pythia. The Pythia, whose words were often cryptic, said only a few words. The curse, the moon, and the blood will run. He couldn't sleep that night. He stayed awake outside of the temple, pondering the meaning of the Pythia's words. As the sun rose in the morning, he realized that he had not slept. As he walked back toward the town, he saw a beautiful woman dressed in white robes walking to the temple. He ran over to her and introduced himself. Her name was Selene, and she was a maiden of the temple. Her sister was the oracle, and so Selene tended to the temple and took care of her sister while in her entranced state. For the next few days, every morning, Ambrosio met Selene at dawn before she entered the temple. They soon fell in love. On his last day in Greece, Ambrosio asked Selene to marry him and return with him to Italy. She agreed. He said he would make the preparations, then meet her at dawn the next morning at their meeting spot outside the temple. Apollo, the sun god, had been watching. He himself had taken a liking to the beautiful Selene and was enraged that Ambrosio would come to his temple and take one of his maidens away. At sunset that night, Apollo appeared to Ambrosio and cursed him so that from that day forth, a mere touch of Apollo's sunlight would burn Ambrosio's skin. Ambrosio was distraught. He was set to leave with Selene in the morning, but he would not be able to meet her at sunrise as he promised because of the curse. Having nowhere else to turn, he ran to a cave that led to Hades for protection. Hades, god of the underworld, listened to his tale and made him a deal. If he could steal the silver bow of Artemides and bring it back, Hades would grant him and Selene protection in the underworld. The deal specified that Hades would give Ambrosio a magical wooden bow and eleven arrows to hunt with. He was to offer his hunting trophies to Artemides in order to gain her favor and steal her silver bow. As collateral, Ambrosio had to leave his soul in Hades until he returned with the bow. Should he return without the silver bow, he would have to live in Hades forever, never to return to Selene. Having no other choice, Ambrosio agreed. He had no way to contact Selene. He had parchments, but no writing implement. So he took his bow and arrow and killed a swan. Using its feather as a pen and its blood as ink, he wrote her a note explaining that he could not meet with her, would find a way for them to be together. He left the note in their meeting place and ran off to find a place to hide from the sunlight. Naturally, Selene was devastated when she found the note, but she kept working at the temple as she did not want to anger Apollo any farther. The next morning, Selene went back to the meeting place, but once again Ambrosio was not there. She saw another piece of parchment with writing in blood on it. It was a love poem from Ambrosio. Before morning, for forty-four days, Ambrosio slew a swan and used its blood to write Selene a love poem. After draining the blood and taking a single feather, he offered the body of the swan as tribute to Artemides the goddess of hunting in the moon, and also sister to Apollo. He hoped that even if he could not steal her bow, she would be honored by the tribute and would be able to convince her brother Apollo to remove the curse. On the forty-fifth night, Ambrosio had only one arrow left. He shot it at a swan and missed, the arrow sailing into the distance. He had neither the blood to write Selene's poem nor the swan to sacrifice to Artemides. He fell to the ground and wept. Seeing how good of a hunter and how dedicated of a follower Ambrosio had been, Armides came down to him. He begged Artemides to let him borrow her bow and an arrow so he could kill one last bird and leave one final note to Selene. Artemides took pity on him and agreed to let him borrow the silver bow and arrow. He took the bow and in desperation ran to the cave that led to Hades. Artemides realized what was happening and cast her own curse on him. The curse caused all silver to burn his skin. Ambrosio dropped the silver bow and fell to the ground in pain. Artemides was furious at his deceit, but he begged her for forgiveness. 
He explained the deal he was forced to make with Hades, his curse by Apollo, and his love for Selene. He apologized profusely and swore that he had no other choice. Artemides took pity on him again and decided to give him one less chance. She offered to make him a great hunter, almost as great as she was, with the speed and strength of a god, and fangs with which to drain the blood of the beast to write his poems. In exchange for his immortality, he would have to agree to a deal. He and Selene would have to escape Apollo's temple and worship Artemides forever. The catch was that Artemides was a virgin goddess, and all of her followers had remained chaste and unmarried, so Ambrosia was never allowed to touch Selene again. They could never kiss, never touch, never have children. Ambrosio agreed. At least this way he and Selene could be together. He killed another swan and left Selene a note telling her to meet him on a ship at the docks. Before dawn the next morning, she saw the note and ran away before Apollo could notice. When Selene arrived at the dock, she found Ambrosio's ship and met him down in the hull. There was a wooden coffin with a note on it telling her to order the ship's captain to set sail, to open the coffin only after the sun had set. She did as the note said, and after sunset she opened the coffin to find Ambrosio alive and well. The couple sailed to Ephesus, where they lived in a cave during the day and worshipped Artemides at her grand temple every night. They lived happily together for many years, never touching, never kissing, never having children. After a number of years, Ambrosio's immortality allowed him to stay young, but Selene continued to age as a mortal. She finally fell ill and was on her deathbed. Ambrosio was distraught, knowing that he would not join Selene in the afterlife because his soul still resided with Hades. At night, he went into the woods and found a white swan swimming alone in a small lake. He killed a swan and offered it to Artemides, begging for her to make Selene immortal so they could stay together forever. Artemides appeared to him. Thankful for his years of dedication and worship, she made him one last deal. Artemides told Ambrosio that he could touch Selene just once to drink her blood. Doing so would kill her mortal body, but from then on, her blood mixed with his could create eternal life for any who drink it. If he did this, Armides would see it that they stayed together forever. Ambrosio wanted to refuse, but after telling Selene what happened, Selene begged him to do it. After much convincing, he bit into her neck and took her blood into his body. As he set her limp body down, Selene began to radiate with light and raise up to the sky. Ambrosio watched as Selene's glowing spirit lifted to meet Artemides at the moon. When she arrived, the moon lit up with a brilliant light. Selene became the goddess of moonlight, and every night she would reach down with her rays of light and finally touch her beloved Ambrosio, as well as all of their children, newly created vampires who carried the blood of Ambrosio and Selene together. <laughs>